The following is a presentation of the Black Hollywood Live Network, the first online broadcast network dedicated to African American entertainment. Hollywood redefined. From Los Angeles, California, presented by Maria Menounos and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies, this is Black Hollywood Live, the Black Tea Party, featuring weekly discussions on political news and current affairs. The following is a presentation of the Black Hollywood Live Network, the first online broadcast network dedicated to African American entertainment, Hollywood redefined. From Los Angeles, California, presented by Maria Menounos and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies, this is Black Hollywood Live, Reality Check, featuring in-depth interviews with today's reality TV stars. Black Hollywood Live, Hollywood redefined. And now, the host of Black Hollywood Live, Reality Check. <laughs> Hello, everyone, and welcome to Black Hollywood Live, Reality Check. I am your host, Ashley Gray. Joined with me, we have Michelle Renee. Hey, what's up? This show is going to be really great, uh, short and sweet. We're going to start right off. Farrah, is this, is, some, is our intro still on? <laughs> Are we good? Are we good, Steven? Okay, perfect. So we're going to jump right into our hot topics. Farrah Abraham, she was on Team Mom. Mm -hmm. She has a new career goal. Guess what she wants to be? She's already done porn stars, so author. That's all she's done author. for, like, the past, what, six years? She's six been years. Like, Has it been that long? It's been a, it's, that, was a little, that was a stretch. But she wants to be a DJ. No. That was a good guess. Though. She wants to be a surgeon. Like, seriously, mm -hmm. she's like, you know, I want to get my Ph.D. and I want to be a surgeon. Is she capable, do you think, of being a surgeon? What type of surgeon? Any type of surgeon. Um, <laughs> Hell no. <laughs> Our engineer says no. Um, I'm going to go ahead and... I'm not going to knock her. If, she, if that's what she wants to do, I'm sure some med school somewhere will gladly take her coins... Um, but as far as her being able to get a job and establish herself afterward, mm, that's a different question. I don't think that she's capable of being a, any kind of surgeon. Maybe role playing if she wants to dress up as a surgeon, Halloween, maybe on video. one of the next videos or something like that. But being a surgeon, absolutely not. Of the reality stars that we discuss on Reality Check, who do you think is capable? Who has the intelligence besides the ones on Married to Medicine? I was going to say. Or, you know. Who do you feel is capable of being a surgeon? Who has the in Phaedra intellect? Phaedra Parks. Say who? Is she even a lawyer? Just saying. I don't know. It doesn't seem like, like it. Would, I don't know how naturally smart she is. Uh, that's not for me to determine. But I do think that she has a very strong work ethic and can study to get wherever she needs to. I mean, she's done what, mortician school. <laughs> she's, she's, like, done, uh, she's done mortician school. She's done law school. She has something else up her sleeve, too, doesn't she? I have no idea. She has a bunch of, I don't know. I mean, so she's halfway there with mortician school, I feel. If you can embalm somebody, then you can operate on them, right? <laughs> Let me just say, I am going to go ahead and X out Phaedra. I don't really Who know. You, pick? you know, a lot of the girls are kind, they're, they're business minded, which is really great, but I feel like business minded and street smarts go hand in hand. I can't really like pinpoint anyone and be like, they're capable of being a doctor. She's capable of being a doctor. Honestly, none of them. I'm just saying I can't think of anyone off the top of my head, but no. Mm. So moving on to the next, <laughs> right, well. there is a new reality show coming to TLC. Transgender teen activist uh, Jazz Jennings, she is now, uh, she has her own reality show. And I really love this. I think it's a very progressive thing to do and to have, especially at her age. She's going to be speaking to a lot of people who feel like they don't have a voice and kind of giving them a voice. How do you think people are going to react to this reality show? Okay, how old is she, first off? 
Well, I don't know specifically how old she is, but looking at this picture, it looks like she's in her teen years. Definitely not late teen. She looked like she's about maybe 12, 13, 14, maybe even 15. But needless to say, she is a teenager, and she's transgender, and she has her own reality show. I don't know. I think that issues like sexuality and sex need to be addressed regardless of what your sexual orientation is or mm -hmm. whatever. I think that's something that needs to be addressed in the home first. Some parents choose to have the birds and the bees talk with their kids younger. Some parents choose to wait until their kids start developing feelings. So I think that having something like this on television, I don't know, might... I don't know, if in the... if like. Children that are too young, if they come into contact with it, I think it could do more harm, harm than, than good, good if the child is too young and hasn't, you know, doesn't even know what gender is yet. You yeah. Know? But I don't know. I think that at a young age, people or children, men and, I mean, girls and boys, they they feel a certain way in their body, just like transgender mm -hmm. uh, individuals. They feel a certain way, but they don't know what it is, even at a young age, four, five, six. Um, so I think that this show will push the conversation, and even if... I'm not saying that mothers, fathers should sit their kids mm -hmm. in front of the television and be like, watch this so you can learn about... No, but I think that it will encourage conversation, and I think it's really important. Even people are sexually active at a really young age, and yeah. I do agree that, you know, I wouldn't tell them to go and watch Real Housewives of Atlanta, but if they happen to see something that they're not supposed to see, I think that it will... They, would, they should go to their parents and talk to them about it. But I think this show is going to be really great just because it's going to push the dialogue specifically surrounding the transgender community. And I think that it's really lacking. So yeah. kudos, congratulations I mean, to you. I don't know. I think a lot of young kids are not concerned about gender. I mean, I'm a pretty girly girl, if you will, now. Mm -hmm. And when I was younger, I was... Such a tomboy. Mm -hmm. Like, I I mean, if that word is politically correct these days, tomboy or whatever you want to call it. I mean, yeah. I, I loved playing with police cars and just toys that are traditionally geared towards more towards boys. Mm -hmm. um, and so if someone would have asked me maybe at, like, five or six, oh, are you a boy or a girl? I don't know. I might who I might have said, oh, I'm a boy. Yeah. But I don't identify now as like a transgender or I don't know the correct terminology to use. So that's, I don't know. Again, that's my only argument is that I feel like kids that are too young could be a little bit confused. Well, I think that it's, I work at a school and mm -hmm. I know that it's definitely an issue. And even with the young kindergartners, I feel like it's really important to have that conversation with them. Even if they make a comment like, I have a lot of students who, you know, like to wear purses, who are boys, boys. Mm -hmm. and who like to, you know, wear little tutus, who are boys. And it's really important for us to say, if this person feels comfortable in whatever skin they're in or whatever outfit that they're in, let them be. It's, it's we, we encourage student individuality. Yeah. And I think that a show like this will really encourage that because a lot of people, they won't, they're not forthcoming with how they feel. Like, they may be feeling a certain kind of way, like, oh, wait, I'm a boy, but I like boys. Boys. In the first grade or the third grade or the fifth grade, it's kind of hard to like openly express that. And I'm not saying that first graders are going around blah blah. blah. But there was a story story recently in the media, and shame on my home state, Ohio. But <laughs> where um, two students, well, actually three students, were involved, and it was all of they were all of the same uh, sex. And two students forced one to perform sexual acts on the other. And this was first graders. Oh, God. And so it's like this dialogue needs to happen. And I'm happy that this show isn't like one of, isn't anything like the shows that we like to watch. <laughs> I think it's very empowering and I feel like we need it because at a very young age, these kids are experimenting. And you wouldn't think that they are, and it's shocking, and it's sad, but it's happening. So stuff like this, I think this show will be will do a lot more good than harm. But I'm pretty sure there's going to be a lot of backlash. Yeah. But who cares? It's needed, and so whatever. <laughs> is there any other new shows coming out? There are new shows coming out. So this is going to be topic four, just for Steven. We're going to be talking about Evelyn first. Okay, so Evelyn Lozado. 
from Basketball Wives mm -hmm. uh, has a new show coming out on OWN. She has her own reality show. See what I did there? Um, the show is going to be on Oprah Winfrey's network and it's going to be about her and her daughter Shanice. She has a new little baby with her fiance Carlos who plays for oh, she the does have a kid. Dodgers, I want to say. I think it he is plays the Dodgers. For the Dodgers. Yeah. Um, so pretty much the show, based off what I read, is just going to follow their lives, talk about how, you know, her and her daughter are working on their careers together. I think they do some fitness things together. <laughs> and just, uh, you know, how she's making it, you Isn't know, she? in her new life and coming into her own outside of Basketball Wives. Are you going to be watching, Ashley? Um, you know, I probably will. I liked her, Evelyn yes. before, so I probably will tune in just to see what the show is all about. But based on the information you just gave me, it sounds like a snooze fest. <laughs> like, we need some, honestly, like, come on, like, I love really smart commentary. But when I'm at home and I have, you know, some wine in my hand, I want to see some juicy drama. I want to give my brain a rest. So, this sounds boring. They need to jazz it up a little bit and get some, throw Nene on there maybe have her be a friend on the show i think it's gonna be kind of boring because she's not really entertaining evelyn i mean she is but by herself yeah. can she hold her own show i don't know and then and the reason why shanice is involved her daughter is because they don't think that evelyn can yeah. hold yeah. her own show i think it depends on what her fiance is like because i feel like evelyn and chad could have easily had oh, their yeah. own reality show and everyone would have watched we know <laughs> that we, we don't like chad and evelyn after you know that whole thing we get it they're over but i just think they could have had their own reality show easily so if her new fiance is you know witty and silly and fun then maybe maybe the show won't be as boring as you're predicting. Yeah, but it's like we're not gonna, they, he has to be amazing because we're not gonna take to him immediately. We're yeah. gonna be like, okay, who is oh, this no. dude? If he's fun and cute. If he's cute. He's cute. I'm, okay, I might, you know, I look a little bit I wouldn't mind her daughter's love life a little bit. Exactly. I think people Can, would be interested in that. I think that Shanice should have her own show and her mom just be on it. Honestly, like I think that that would be more entertaining because she's younger, she's gonna bring that like drama and then Evelyn's kind of like, okay. Well, does Shanice have the personality for a show of her own? I've never met her, so that wasn't a dig. I'm legitimately asking. I really don't know. I don't know, but I think that they can, it it has the works, the makings of a good show. I think to have your own reality show, you have to not only have a good personality, you have to have a great personality. Yeah. Like, think of the people that have got spinoffs on, like, Real Housewives of Atlanta or whatever. You just have to it's be been crazy. the people. Yeah, it's been the people with the biggest personalities. So you gotta be a Kim, you gotta be. A Bethany Frankel, you know, somebody that's really got a story to tell. Yeah. So it doesn't mean you're boring if you can't have your own reality show. It just means you're no not as interested. exciting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's interested in watching no. you. Is there another new show? There's not another new show, but there's another story that I have about another cast member of Basketball Wives. Mm -hmm. So Royce Reed um, from Basketball Wives Miami, is that the one she was on? Who knows? Um, she has a child with Dwight Howard and... Score. Uh, or maybe not. So Dwight uh, pretty much enforced... I don't know what the correct terminology is, but she was under a gag order while on the show um, and afterward to not speak about Dwight um, in, I guess, the context of their relationship or their child or whatever. She allegedly has broken this gag order numerous times and Dwight is fed up with it. So he is now suing her, I think, to garnish the amount of money that's owed to him from her breaking the gag order, if that makes sense. <laughs> so yeah. he won a lawsuit against her yeah. for her breaking the gag order. She hasn't paid the money yet, and now he's garnishing her bank accounts for the money. Is that petty or? No, absolutely not. I feel like <laughs> I feel like if something is legally binding, you are bound to that those documents. And if I tell you you cannot speak on this, this, or this, then you can't. It's just, it's a legally binding contract. So, no. I mean, he clearly has more money than she has, though. So is that Super petty for him to, like... No. Too bad. She came for him because she wanted the coins. She should have kept her mouth shut. And because she didn't keep her mouth shut, he's like, those little bit, that change that I gave you, give it back. That's what she gets. Oh, well. I mean, how do you, obviously, you do not feel that way. You're, you think that it's petty that he's, like, requesting his money back? Okay. Dwight, if you didn't want someone to speak about you and they then spoke about you, you then go on this 
hunt to get their money, which is all over the media, which <laughs> has the media and everyone else speaking about you and this person more than they would have if you would just would have ignored her. But you I understand think what I'm saying? It's like contradictory because now everyone really is speaking about them together, speaking about their past relationships, speaking about the fact that they have a child together, delving into their past history. So mm -hmm. you're just, he's just bringing it up again. He should have just ignored it. Yeah, I think it's more specific things, though. Like, I don't think that he cares about people talking about him and her. It's just like, what are you telling them? What are you feeding them? Because she can be telling them a really, really intimate personal things that he doesn't want to get out. We all have those things. My best friend knows some stuff. And mm. I'm like, when I get famous, it if TMZ come to you, you better not. Like, I'll probably have some people sign some gag orders. Like, but, uh, okay, how does that work? Do you know how that works? Because this is America, so I thought people can say whatever they want. As no. long as it's not liable or whatever. If you sign papers, or, you are legally but what bound if I to don't those sign papers. Them? If, then you can say whatever you want to. Okay. All right. But she signed them. She was like, okay, I'm, I won't speak of this. A lot of people actually have, you know, have done... Confidentiality agreements. I think that's one thing, but... I don't know. I don't think I would ever sign a document that says what I can and cannot say. I think a gag order is more severe than a that confidential. Sound a little, yeah. That sounds shady. Yeah, I think that. <laughs> <laughs> gag order. Like, okay. Gag on this. <laughs> um, I think it's a little bit more severe, but long story short, she just, you definitely Zip cannot your run your mouth when you sign on the dotted lines. It's just, you just can't do it. So, guys, right. let us know what you think. Hashtag BHR Reality Check. Leave us a comment below. And you can always find me on Twitter and Instagram at Ashley Gray TV. We're not done yet, but Michelle, tell everyone where they can find you. Just My so social media accounts are Twitter and Instagram, Michelle Renee TV. <laughs> 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 okay, so this week. we are about to do our game, a reality check or X. You guys know how it goes. I'm going to tell you my story. I reality... Okay, I'm in the middle with this one. Okay. Let me just tell you the story. Pretty much Blue Ivy has like this chariot and like three cars that follows her to school to drop her off. She to has like three, bottle, three bodyguards and like it's just like this huge production just to drop Blue Ivy off. And, you know, on one hand, I agree. Like, okay, her mom is Beyonce, her dad is Jay-Z, in the spotlight, definitely need protection. But then on the other hand, I'm like, seriously? Like, it's not that serious. And if Beyonce and Jay-Z feels that it's that serious, homeschooler. I don't know. So I'm reality, I'm reality I don't knowing. I don't knowing. Whatever. I'm not reality X or reality check just yet. Michelle, what's your opinion? And I'll let you know. Where did you, where, are you, because I know this story also that, like, I guess parents at the school that she goes to are kind of, I don't know, in their feelings about the fact that all this commotion has to happen for them to drop off the Honestly, kids. Honestly, okay. So is that what you're also? It's every, th every element about it, but I will touch, touch on that. When you drop off your kids, it's supposed to be really, really fast, and they have what's called swift drop-off, where <laughs> you literally, there's a curb, and you and have you your faculty. Your kid out of literally, the you, you have faculty and staff, and it's and like push your five <laughs> people lined up, and you all, it's just, it's you pull up, Open the door, say good morning, you help the kid out, that's it. It's so, so quick, and it's only, like, for a half an hour. So, gates open at 8 <laughs> o'clock, the gates close at 8.30, you drop, it's swift drop-off, it's supposed to be really, really fast. Here come Beyonce, Blue Ivy, with five cars, you taking up the whole swift drop-off, like, parameter. And we are there to keep the kids safe, you know what I mean? Like... People are in place. Do people stand? Do people sit in the car and watch their child go in? Because my mom used to hate that. Some she people, used to be like, you don't have to watch little Johnny walk to the door. He's walking two steps to the door. Get out of the way so I can get my child. Some people do, but they encourage them not to. <laughs> and I think that's what the big deal is. It's like people are like, seriously, this is a how old is Blue Ivy? And this is all of this commotion. Put her in homeschool if you're going to do this because it does upset the the traffic, the traffic flow. It's like, dude, I got to be at work at 8.15 and I'm waiting beyond, behind Blue Ivy and them. Half of the kids getting dropped off at Blue Ivy school are not getting dropped off by their parents. They're getting dropped off by a driver and who has nowhere to be. Well, you never know. You never know. She goes to school with some kids that are... But you'll be surprised at... The, 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 the schools may seem like luxurious and like over the top 
But most of the time, they're just normal schools with, like, normal faculty and staff. And although you have these celebrities that go there, they treat them just like the rest of the kids. Because everyone, they have money. Of course, mm-hmm. you have it's $15,000 to go to the school that, $15,000 a year to go to the school that Blue Ivy goes to. So, for her grade. Um, so, I guess, I don't know. I don't know. I'm... I'm exing it. This is just ridiculous. I don't know. Bring one car in, have the bodyguards all in there, drop her little butt off, and move along. Maybe you she's do not scared. need more. Leave her at home. Anybody <laughs> got time for no scared little girl? You come to school to learn, to get your education on. That's a part of the growing up process. I understand that she's going to be scared, but I would imagine she would be more terrified of this big, bulky guy in a suit dropping her off. That's probably like her best friend. <laughs> like, <laughs> You know how they get attached to the help? <laughs> like the mammy well, that used to, you know? No, it's true. It's true. Breastfeed the little, you know, slave. <laughs> like that. This is going nowhere. Let me just stop. But I'm saying back in slavery, some of the white people used to be closer to their mammy, who was the black person that would, like, wet nurse them. No, I get it. And everything. They used to be closer to them than their own mama. So I'm saying, like, Blue is probably best friends with her bodyguard. <laughs> Well, you anyway, guys let I'm us over know. Here. I check it. I don't know. I got one too, though. Okay, so I'm exiting it. Michelle. I'm exit too. Okay, I'm so exit you guys let us know. <laughs> Hashtag VHL reality check. Michelle, what's your story? Um, I'm gonna. I have a story. I don't know if I'm gonna reality check or exit yet. So, own. Speaking of reality shows on own, there's another one that I read about this week about a gentleman that appeared on Ayanla Fix My Life who has 34 kids by 17 different women. <laughs> Ashley's disgusted. So apparently, black. Do you have to ask? So apparently, this gentleman is getting his own reality show on OWN, a spinoff of his appearance on Ayanla, which is the most popular episode until Karuchi's episode comes out. Uh, 28th of March. (laughs) Which is tomorrow, isn't it? Oh, yeah. But anyway, this is the most popular and most controversial talked about episode so far of the show, and he's getting his own spinoff. So I'm going to reality exit I don't know I I just I don't know if it's done correctly I think it could be positive but if not it's gonna be messy and that's not own that's not own's demo I mean messy reality shows no I don't think so but I feel like this has a a level of Keisha Cole type on it like that kind of ratchet sophisticated Ratchet, if you can even call it sophisticated. Um, upscale ratchet. Yeah, upscale. But <laughs> 34 different children by 34 children by 17 different baby mothers. I feel like he he. I don't know. I'll have to. I'm definitely gonna tune in because I really want to know the direction that the show is going in. But this is something that doesn't need to be on TV. This needs to be fixed. Like I. Yeah. But, but this could document his progression and how he's like helping to pay for all of these kids. And I find it interesting. What job do you have that you are able to feed these 34 kids? Because I need that job. Like, where do they <laughs> live? Do you know? I mean, where does he live? It has to be somewhere cheap. It can't be I mean, California. I don't think he's taking care of the children. I didn't see the episode. Jesus. Let me not speak on something I don't know about. But based off the comments I've read online, a lot of his, some of his kids appeared in the episode and they were, you know, speaking to him about how you know, disappointed they were in the fact that their dad wasn't there financially, emotionally, none of that. Mm. So, because he has older kids that are, like, in their 20s. <laughs> and then he has some that are, this like, 20 months. funny. So, I again, I think if it's done correctly, it can be good. But I think if he's just allowed to have his own reality show and, like... He's out there chasing skirts, trying to get kid number thirty-five. <laughs> I, I don't think we need to watch that. If he gets a, someone pregnant on this reality show, I, I just can't. And he I, refuses to get a vasectomy, by the way. You know what? I have to. Gonna I'm going to gonna reality it? check it only because it's on own. Mm-hmm. I really respect the network, and I feel like they're going to do something with this show that's going to be unpredictable and unexpected, and it's going to be like really great, and it's going to show shine some light on that stereotype that uh, black dead. men do not take care of their children. Hopefully, because we all know that is a stereotype. I don't know it to be true necessarily, but. Or maybe I do. You don't know it to be true. Okay. I mean, because all of the men in my life who happen to be black, they take care of their children. My father was great for me. Both of them. I have a stepdad and a bio. But, um, biological. (laughs) Um, So I don't know, but I've heard. And I have friends who have 
babies and their baby fathers are not necessarily in the picture. So hopefully this show will mm-hmm. kind of shine some positive light if there can be any to be shown on this subject. We'll see. We'll I, see. I check it because I think it's okay. going to be great. All right. Well, we'll we see. shall see lots of new reality shows. Well, that's it, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. Again, you can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Ashley Gray TV. Michelle, where can everyone find you? Instagram and Twitter at Michelle Renee TV. Thank you so much, and we will see you next week. From producers Maria Menunos, Dario Kristen, Tiana Hobson, Kevin Undergaro, and the entire BHL crew, we would like to thank you for supporting Black Hollywood Live, the first online broadcast network dedicated to African American entertainment. For questions and comments, contact us at info at blackhollywoodlive.com. Like us on Facebook, tweet us, or Instagram us at BHL Online. And I'm your BHL announcer, Scipio. Instagram me at Planet Scipio. Thank you for tuning in. Hollywood Redefined. The views expressed here are those of the host only and do not necessarily reflect the views of BHL or its owners or principals.